Working with older people is really great because they're filled with memories and experiences that if you just spend a few minutes with them, they'll share with you. Sometimes, however, they start to have trouble with their memory, and we refer to that as dementia. Today, we're going to first discuss how the brain works. Then we're going to introduce you to an individual who struggles uh, with memory troubles associated with dementia. And finally, we're going to help you understand what it's like to walk in that man's shoes. Dementia is a permanent loss of intellectual abilities caused by brain damage. People with dementia might forget things or people they know. They may forget how to talk or how to understand. And others won't be able to control their bodies or the way that they act. Dementia is common in persons over 65. The symptoms of dementia depend on which part of the brain is damaged. A human brain contains billions of brain cells. Different parts of the brain control different body functions. One part of the brain stores old information. Another part stores new information. One part stores speaking, while another part stores understanding. You're born with all the brain cells you'll ever have. So when brain cells die, they are gone forever. Dementia is caused by the death of too many brain cells. To begin with, let's look at how the brain works. Here we see a model of the brain that's sitting in the skull. You'll notice that part of the brain right here sits uh, up by your eyes, that's called the frontal lobe. But the part of the brain we're talking about today, the temporal lobe, sits down by your ear. Let's get a better picture of this right here. This is where your ear would be located, and your temporal lobe sits right here hanging off the side of your brain. Let's look at what happens to your temporal lobe in Alzheimer's disease. Here we see two halves of brains. This half is from a normal person. This half is from a person with Alzheimer's disease. Look at the shrinkage that you see on the outside of the brain. This is referred to as atrophy in the Alzheimer's. But now let's look carefully at the temporal lobe. Here we see a normal temporal lobe. And here we see a shrunken temporal lobe from a patient with Alzheimer's disease. This is where memories are stored. Let's look at a cut section, a cross section through the brain, as we see over here, to see what this atrophy looks like. Here's a cut section from a normal person. This is from a mid-stage Alzheimer patient. And this is from an end-stage Alzheimer patient. Let's look at the size of the temporal lobe here in the normal versus the early versus the late. Look at the shrinkage right here in the part of the brain that stores recent memory as seen here in the Alzheimer patient in comparison to the normal over here. Look at what it looks like in an Alzheimer patient. See how severely uh, shrunken it is? This is what produces the short-term memory problems that you see in residents with Alzheimer's disease. This is Robert. He has Alzheimer's disease. Robert is 77 years old and has trouble finding the words he wants to say and understanding everything people are saying to him. Dr. Powers sat down with Robert and tested his memory by giving him three things to remember. Let's see what happened. That's a frustrating thing when you want to talk to somebody and you, your mind is, you know, it's just not there. The words you want to say, it, it's just not there. Remember. Registering and remembering are two different brain tasks. Let me just test your memory very briefly. I'm gonna give you three things to remember and I'm gonna ask you in a couple minutes what they are, okay? It's okay if you can't remember them. The three things are pony, nickel, yellow. Can you say those three things? Pony, nickel, yellow. Good, now you remember those three things because I'm going to ask you in a couple of minutes. Sort of a game. This test measures short-term memory. We see that Robert is able to register all three words because he can repeat them back to the tester. The next question is whether he can remember those three words after four or five minutes. 
By the way, can you remember those three things that I asked you to remember? Here's what a phony one. That's one. Yellow. That's two. That's four. Nickel was the third one. That's pretty good. Two out of three. Robert is typical of patients with Alzheimer's disease in the early to mid stages. He is filled with many old memories that he can recount in great detail. However, he struggles to remember two out of the three words in five minutes. Patients can register and repeat simple instructions about everyday issues like bathing or dressing, but they will forget some or all of the instructions after four or five minutes. Just like Robert struggles to recall two simple words in five minutes. Remember, just because residents can repeat instructions does not mean that they can remember instructions in four or five minutes. Patients need constant reminders. When Alzheimer's disease causes dementia, people lose their memory and they might forget instructions or forget to take their medicine. It also might be hard for them to find objects and remember answers to questions. We need to uh, remind ourselves that uh, they do tend to forget uh, and not be familiar with their surroundings. Uh, they do tend to um, lose contact with reality. Yeah, I have uh, had residents uh, tell me about times they were in the military in the service. Uh, they can remember vividly uh, flying or, or in some capacity like that. And we can ask them what the day is or what they ate. Uh, and it can be just a few minutes behind that, and they'll forget. And they'll tell you, I don't know. I don't remember. You have to be mindful that these people are here for a reason. You have to keep in mind why they're here. And you must, you know, give them patience. Try to be understanding. It's important to remember that when you're around someone with dementia, they are acting strangely not because they want to, but because their brain is damaged. They may experience changes in personality, mood, and behavior. They may be depressed, have false beliefs, hear voices, or see things that aren't there. These changes are a result of the brain damage and are not within their control. While you can't reverse the effects of brain damage, you can help improve the quality of life of the resident by interacting with them, helping them stay physically active, and being understanding towards them. Remember, when caring for dementia residents, use frequent reminders, give simple instructions, and stay cool. Try to imagine what it would be like to lose your memory and become disoriented like someone who has dementia. You go to bed one night in your home, on your street, in your city. You wake up the next morning in a motel in Kansas City, Missouri. You have a roommate who you don't know lying in a bed next to yours. Someone from the motel bursts in and tries to get you out of bed. You suddenly realize that someone put an adult-sized diaper on you sometime during the night and it's all wet. How would you react to the motel worker when she tries to change your diaper? Please stop the tape and think about how you would feel under these circumstances and discuss it with other participants in the course. Patients with disorientation and memory troubles must reorient themselves every morning. This confusion produces fear and anxiety. 
you must reassure patients with words, actions, and attitudes. Introduce yourself to the patient every morning. Smile and speak slowly. Always remain calm and pleasant. Give the patient frequent reminders. Good night, Alexandra. Good night, Dad. I hope you sleep well tonight. Thank you. May I have a glass of water, please? Sure, I'll be right back with it. Have you ever walked to a different room to perform an important task, and when you got to the room, you forgot why you were there? How did you feel? Dad, where's my glass of water? How did you finally remember what you were going to do? How would you feel if this happened every time you changed rooms? Dementia patients forget many instructions after five minutes. They realize that they should be doing something, but they can't remember what. This memory problem produces stress, anxiety, and distress. You can help reduce a patient's stress. Give short instructions. Repeat instructions every two or three minutes. Remain calm and pleasant. Remember that the patient has probably forgotten who you are. Mr. Jones has Alzheimer's disease. He bothers you by asking the same questions over and over again. He can tell you everything that happened 20 years ago, but he cannot remember the instructions you gave him just 10 minutes ago. What is the most likely explanation for Mr. Jones' behavior? He is stubborn and mean and gets attention by asking the same questions. Mr. Jones doesn't pay attention like he should and then forgets the answer. Mr. Jones has Alzheimer's disease and his short-term memory is lost, even though his long-term memory is intact. He lives in the past because he can't remember the present. Mr. Jones is trying to get attention so his daughter will take him out of the assisted living facility. What can you do to help Mr. Jones? Occupy his time so he won't ask the same questions over and over again. Stay calm and pleasant when he seems forgetful. Give Mr. Jones memory exercises to help strengthen his short-term memory. He can improve with practice. Give Mr. Jones a memory book and have him write your answers down. Tell him to remember to check the memory book if he has a question. Call Mr. Jones' daughter and ask her to chastise him for his childlike behavior. Tell his daughter that he can do better if he tries harder. Ms. Smith, an 82-year-old Alzheimer's patient, begins to describe unusual occurrences at night. She hears voices of dead relatives and occasionally sees them in her room. She is convinced she has seen her relatives and dismisses your reassurances that her dead relatives are not in trouble. What can you do to help Ms. Smith? Scold Ms. Smith for having crazy ideas. Call Ms. Smith's family and ask them to convince her that her relatives are dead. Call the paramedics for an immediate transfer to the psychiatric hospital. Reassure Ms. Smith that everything is okay. Distract her and change the subject to something pleasant. Tell the nurse what is happening to Mrs. Smith. Mr. Anderson is convinced that he is living at home on his farm. Every evening, he asks to leave the facility to go visit his brother on the next farm. Occasionally, Mr. Anderson becomes loud and angry because he cannot visit his brother. What can you do to help Mr. Anderson? Lock him in his room at 3 o'clock. Bring him dinner in his room with the door closed and monitored. 
continue to reassure Mr. Anderson that he is no longer living on his farm and that his brother is dead. Schedule activities in the afternoon and early evening that distract Mr. Anderson. Engage him in pleasant activities. Call Mr. Anderson's family and demand that he be discharged. He's unmanageable. Ms. Hastings suffers from mild dementia. She must take medications four times each day. You're not sure about whether or not she took her morning medication and it's already 11 a.m. You ask Ms. Hastings about her medicine and she assures you that everything is okay. What should you do? Record that Ms. Hastings has taken her medication without a problem. Double check with the nurse to make sure that Ms. Hastings took her medicine. She can be forgetful. Readminister the medication to Ms. Hastings with the general idea that it's better to be safe than sorry. Call Ms. Hastings' family and ask her son if she ever lies about taking her medication. Mr. Baker has Alzheimer's disease. Every day you remind him to come to the dining room for dinner. You leave the door to his room open and signal for him to come. You see him move slowly into the hallway. In five minutes, you return to check on Mr. Baker and find him walking in the opposite direction of the dining room. Why is Mr. Baker acting so strangely? He doesn't like to be told to come eat his dinner. He is stubborn and mean. He wants you to beg him to come eat his supper. Mr. Baker is angry with his wife for having him placed in an assisted living facility. He is intentionally being difficult so that he will be thrown out of the facility and his wife will have to take him home. Mr. Baker is lazy. He wants you to take him to the dining hall. He thinks that because he's old, he deserves special attention. Mr. Baker only remembers your instructions for only about five minutes. Then he forgets where he's going as he slowly moves through the hallway. He needs continuous reminders to make sure he gets to dinner.